Hi there, this is Mark and I am coming to you on February 20th for my daily reading from The Golden Present, daily inspirational readings by Sri Swami Satchidananda, reading these for one year. Thanks for joining. Today is President's Day. It's a very rainy, uh, wet day here in San Francisco and I'm doing the reading to share with you about The Heart Will Win. That is the heading, The Heart Will Win. The heart should play an important role, not only in married life, but in all of our relationships with friends, relatives, business associates, and even strangers. Even if the other person uses the head, you should use more heart. Remember, ultimately, the heart will win. It might take time, but it will win. If you really want to use your heart, you will be guided in that direction. God's guidance will be there. Pray more and trust in that higher force. The heart will win. Hmm. Tuna's heart will win. Tuna's in the room. Yeah. Come here, Tuna. Hi. You know, I think I'll use her as an example since she just wanted to make her appearance. Um, <laughs> right? I think that when I respond to Tuna's meowing, hi. Um, oh, there's some hair. She's a shedder. Yes. It's this immediate connection um, that feels like a heart-to-heart -heart with, with my cat. Um, there's not the ability to have the same um, set of vocabulary, the same language, of course. She has her version of something with her different meows, and I've heard there's like over a hundred different meows, you know, that are meant to express something different in a cat. And uh, I don't know what they all mean, and she certainly can only understand a sense of what my words mean to her. So we end up having to relate on a different level, which for me, I end up kind of recognizing it as more of a heart-to-heart -heart level, just seeing these basic needs of affection, of kindness, um, taking care of her, looking after her, that kind of thing. And I think she sees in me like this person who's going to pet her and you know, show her care and kindness. And that to me is all stuff from, from the heart. I mean, certainly we have to use our minds, our intellects. Um, our brain is what creates the ability for the body to function. You know, things are firing inside the body down to the muscles to be able to help me lift and move my arms. So the heart is helping in the sense that it's, <laughs> yes, and that it's pumping blood um, through, through muscle and through the whole body so that they, they function. But in terms of an emotional place of operating from, there is an intelligence in the heart. And I was just talking with a friend earlier today about the idea of, um, what is it like when people actually uh, are able to communicate and commune with one another from a heart-centered space more than a mind-centered space. Because the mind, you know, it can be filled with so many um, different ideas about what we think is right and wrong, and it has all of this chatter, you know, thousands of different things that come in. Um, where the heart, I feel like it's it's more based in the feeling space of ourselves, and it has a, oftentimes, um, in my experience, I feel like the heart recognizes the oneness within things, whereas the mind is part of the discerning place of duality that it has at its uh, that practice of right, wrong, trust, don't trust. Um, and I feel like the heart is has the ability to either be open and to find that oneness, that connection, or to be closed, to focus only in on the personal oneness. And when it can be opened, 
which takes practice. It's not something that's automatic. I think more and more of our culture is starting to, you know, protect and close with some of the way our body postures are going. And things like yoga and just even uh, finding ways to correct our posture so that we can sit more comfortably. We can find that, that center of balance where the body is most easily being upright, whether seated or standing. You know, anytime there's a an angle or an off balance, we're putting that extra weight on the spine or on the joints. And there's a lot of compensating that's having to happen, even sometimes if our head happens to be a little more forward or we're holding it a little more back. Um, there is that, that sense of uh, adding to the uh, center of gravity in a way that causes more effort to happen. Actually, I forgot why I'm talking about posture. Um, <laughs> I totally I was just starting to go into the physical aspects of it. But um, in any event, um, the heart will win. Even if the other person uses the head, you should use more heart. So that can be challenging because if you feel like you're having that conversation where, you know, with my example with my cat, if I'm trying to expect that my cat understands my words and that I'm getting angry because I'm trying to tell my cat to do something and how can she know, you know, what it is what exactly that I want her to do. And, you know, she's just all waiting for that, the affection, the connection, the love, and I'm trying to get her to to think like I want her to think, we're going to be at odds, right? But it happens, you know, and we can think of that in different scales of, or different areas um, where this relative situation happens with coworkers, with family. Um, it can go all the way up to people we don't even know, um, things we see on TV shows and in news. I have um, friends who talk about how they talk to the television when, um, you know, things are happening with dramas or even um, game shows or whatever, they're sort of yelling at the person like, no, no, do this, you said, this is what the answer is, or don't open that door. <laughs> um, we're, we're trying to create a, a, open a level of communication that, you know, in some ways it's entertaining, but in the other level, we only have so much power in being able to reach out to them because we're trying to reach out with our minds, with our intellect, uh, with our sense that we can um, get through to certain things in that way. But when we're activating from the place of the heart center, I feel like there's actually a maybe more subtle um, activation and integration of energies happening that creates a line of communication and a conversation that um, I think that softens into a, a place of that oneness where we recognize that all things are equal, that it's only the mind that wants to separate things and distinguish because it has that need to. But in the heart center space, we do recognize that even I, you know, me and my cat are, are one, and her needs um, are, are, are you know, there for me to be able to respond to, you know, to feed her and change her water bowl, to hold her. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, God's guidance will be there. Pray more and trust in that higher force. I think when we're focusing in on ourselves or we're focusing, you know, for example, even in a, on our own pain, it can be then um, very difficult to be able to be open to any other energies that are presenting itself for guiding us or helping us for being able to be open and open our hearts to a higher power. So that's something I recognize in the practices. What can I do to help, um, 
you know, soften that or resolve my own pain, my own struggle uh, as much as I can so that I can be able to feel safe and able to open my heart again, to be able to see that subtle energy that I can connect and relate to. Maybe at times it does need to be closed, you know, I do need to go inward. And, you know, that's important. Then I do the work that's needed in order to come back and connect outward. So I feel like that's part of the process. You know, it's going through the different stages, like there are different, different stages of enlightenment, of awakening. You know, we go through the different stages of learning how to communicate effectively and from a place that we feel connects us more rather than one that separates us, isolates us. All right, I'll leave it there. The heart will win. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you tomorrow.